its mission to foster academic excellence and all-round development of its students. We at Billa Badika Vidya Peet Bilani provide every opportunity to its students to create leaders with global outcome. In the present lockdown time, this virtual platform provides right opportunity where students' work and ideas can be shared with others. This will help the students in arousing their interest and curiosity in science and developing the skill and knowledge that they need in life. Salt 
particles uh, got fully dissolved in water and we are not able to see with them uh, with our naked eyes so let's move on to suspension suspension is a heterogeneous mixture in which particles do not dissolve in water instead they are suspended in water and we can see them easily with naked eyes so here i have got some chalk here i have got some chalk powder We need a white paper. We need a china rose and a lemon. Rub this china rose over this on this paper. That how it will look. Then add the lemon to this. You can see that it color is changing because of this lemon. This state that when an acid is added. the solution its color changes from purple to pink this indicate that the lemon is an acid for second experiment you need a baking soda solution a white paper and a china rose its color changes from purple to green because because this indicate that blue color green color is for base and when base is added to this natural solution it color changes to green hello everyone i am swasti dubey from class 10 have you ever wondered what is resistance how are current and resistance related to each other how does length affects resistance and what are the instruments that are related to resistance so now let's see this activity and clarify the doubts that generally arise when we read about resistance 
and current. This is an electric circuit. This is a battery that provides us with voltage. This is an ammeter. Ammeter is an instrument that is used to measure current flowing through a circuit in its SR unit, ampere. This is a rheostat. A rheostat is generally referred to as variable resistance. Now for understanding what is a rheostat, we need to understand what is resistance. Resistance is the property of the conductors to oppose the flow of current. By the definition, it is very clear that resistance and current are inversely proportional to each other. That is, if the resistance increases, the current flowing will decrease and if the resistance decreases, the current flowing will increase. A rheostat is referred to as variable resistance. It is an instrument that is used to change resistance in a circuit without changing its components. So in this activity, we will see how the, a factor of resistance that is length of the conductor is applicable in changing the resistance through the rheostat. So now let's start. This is the battery. The battery right now is on and the rheostat, the whole length of the rheostat is an application to generate resistance in the circuit. Right now in the ampere, the current flowing that is the reading of the ampere is 0.05 ampere as the resistance of the rheostat is really really large. Now we will decrease the length of the rheostat to almost half. Now we can note that the ampere reading, that is the ammeter reading in amperes of the current has risen up to 0.1 ampere. Now we will decrease the length more further. Now a very little length, a very small length of the rheostat is an application to generate resistance in the circuit. This part of the length is not an application. Now we can see the ammeter reading has risen up so much that it is right now 0.6 ampere. We already knew that current and resistance are inversely proportional to each other. So by seeing the activity, we can give out an conclusion that as the length increases, the resistance will increase and as the length decreases, the resistance will decrease. That is length and resistance, length of the conductor and the resistance are directly proportional to each other. I hope this activity clarified all your doubts related to resistance and the current and the factors related to resistance and about rheostat. Thank you. Applications are making bio-inspired materials. Spider-Man may soon be a reality because a com Japanese company Spiber has been able to decode the genes responsible for the production of fibroin which spiders use to make their web. These artificial spider webs can be used to make auto parts, surgical materials and bulletproof vests. Outer Space Applications as a material scientist for space applications, one has to completely re-engineer everything available on this planet, including developing new sources of oxygen and water, new fuels, new building material to survive higher and lower gravities and huge storms. New greetings to everyone. Myself, Tanvisha Goyal, and I read in class 10E. In this presentation of mine, I would be talking about material science and I hope this would create interest and prove knowledgeable to one and all. Let me begin by telling you an interesting fact. A commercial jet is struck by lightning at least once a year. This exposes it to an extremely high temperature of 30,000 degrees Celsius and a strong current of 32,000 amperes. It can be well imagined that a single stroke of lightning is quite strong and silver were discovered. The first alloy to be discovered was bronze, first made with the combination of arsenic and copper but later on with the combination of tin and copper. 
Bronze proved to be a more stronger metal and hence it was used as the main component in making building materials, armors, tools, etc. Hello everyone, today I am going to present before you a very interesting topic that is space. So let's explore something interesting about space. When we talk about space, the first question arises, what is space? Space is the boundless three-dimensional extent in which objects and events have relative position and direction. If you go to space, nobody can hear you if you are laughing, speaking, screaming, etc. as space is a vacuum and as we all know, sound cannot travel through a vacuum. Our space is approximately 13.8 billion years old. Now, let's move on to outer space. Outer space begins about 100 km above the earth where the shell of our air, shell of our air around our planet disappears. It exits beyond the earth and between celestial bodies. Now, let's talk about some interesting facts about space. Our solar system is 4.57 billion years old. Space is completely silent. There are infinite many stars in space. And one of the salient features of space is that there is a lot of water. Now, let's move on to another topic that is planets. There are 8 planets namely Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus. In this Hi everyone, this is Kirti and I am from Bilda Balika Vidyapit Pilani Rajasthan and today I am going to talk about the depletion of ozone layer with the help of this PPT. So first of all, we will talk about that what is ozone layer. So it is a region of the earth's stratosphere that absorbs most of the sun's ultraviolet radiation and it has a high concentration of O3, it means ozone. And the ozone layer is mainly found in the lower portion of the stratosphere. And these are the some pictures which shows the current scenario of our planet Earth. Now we're going to talk about ozone depletion. With the help of the uh, this image, you all can easily found that what I want to tell like we are using CFCs deforestation is there oil and petrol we are using in our cars and burning of fossil fuels and releasing of greenhouse gases all these things what they do they, they damage our ozone layer that is that is so much harmful for us and for our planet earth Now ozone cycle overview. So uh, the ozone it is mainly made from three forms of oxygen and this is a highly poisonous gas and chlorine ion and bromine, uh, bromine ion are the harmful gases for the ozone layer. Now what are the observations that are made on the ozone layer? So it was found that the ozone that is destroyed in the lower stratosphere and in the 19 the first hole in the ozone was found in the 1980s and it was near the Antarctica region. Now the main cause of ozone depletion are the uses of chlorofluorocarbons which uh, we are using them in ACs and in the refrigerators and nowadays government has also started some programs uh, like to stop the overuse of CFCs because they are really damaging our environment and that is so much harmful for us and now what are its causes so like it's, it have very negative effect it can damage our eyes and skin and it can also cause several respiratory diseases and it even can cause cancer like skin cancer and lung cancer so how can we all prevent this 
there may be some anything like we can prevent this yes of course we can so like we can avoid the consumption of the dangerous uh, gases to the ozone layer like we can stop the uses of cfcs we can buy those refrigerators like they are not releasing the cfc gas and the acs also we can minimize the use of cars we can use public transport as much as possible do not use clean product that are harmful to the environment and to us buy local products and maintain air conditioner world ozone day is every year celebrated on 16 september it last but not the least i just want to say save save ozone save earth thank you so much for watching me so my topic is vaccines i was thinking in this particular time when all of the world is waiting for a vaccine that would save countless lives it would be interesting to know more about vaccines and what exactly happens in this process the time span for developing a vaccine can take months if not years it has to undergo numerous trials what are vaccines why are they called disease or pathogen imposters A vaccine is a biological preparation that provides active acquired immunity to a particular infectious disease. Vaccines are known as pathogen or disease imposters. This is because vaccines look like a particular bacteria or virus to the immune system, but it does not make the body sick. Vaccines work by mimicking disease agents and stimulate the immune system to build up defenses against them. Vaccines are made of dead or weakened antigens. The agents stimulate the body's immune system to recognize the agent as foreign, destroy it and remember it so that the immune system can more easily recognize and destroy any of these microorganisms that it later encounters. Why do we need vaccines? We are protected from infectious disease by our immune system which destroys disease causing germs which are known as pathogens. When they invade the body, if our immune system isn't quick or strong enough to prevent pathogens from taking hold, then we get ill. Vaccines prevent an estimated 2 to 3 million deaths worldwide every year. But a further 1.5 million lives could be saved annually with better global vaccine coverage. vaccine work our immune system fights diseases by distinguishing between things that belong to our body and things that don't destroying the latter unwanted foreign substances are identified by markers on their surface called antigens a vaccine works by exposing the immune system to the antigens from a pathogen something such as a virus or bacterium that causes a certain disease when our immune cells encounter these antigens they mount a response one cell type called the b cells start making antibodies which bind to the foreign substance disable it and mark it for destruction other immune cells called the t killer cells attack and destroy cells of the body that have been infected by the pathogen at the same time the body also produces long lived types of white blood cells called memory t and memory b cells that remember the antigens that have just been encountered if our immune system comes across the same antigens again these memory cells allow you to mount a stronger response against that specific pathogen very quickly so that you are much less likely to get ill a vaccine contains the antigens from a pathogen which are needed to provoke the body's immune response and stimulate the production of antibodies However, there are different types of vaccines which deliver antigens in different ways. Now, what are the types of vaccines? The first one is live attenuated vaccines. Some vaccines such as uh, the vaccine for tuberculosis contain a live version of the whole pathogen. However, in such cases the strength of the pathogen is weakened before it is given to stimulate an immune response without a full infection. 
Live attenuated virus vaccines are also used in the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. The next one is the inactivated vaccine. Some vaccines contain an inactive version of a pathogen, one that has been killed already. The immune system can still recognize and respond to the pathogen, but as the pathogen cannot reproduce, it poses no risk of infection. Cholera, hepatitis A, and rabies vaccine all contain inactivated pathogens. The next one is toxoid vaccines. The symptoms of some diseases are caused by harmful products of bacteria known as toxins. Vaccines for these diseases, for example tetanus, use an activated version of toxins called toxoids to stimulate an immune response. The next one is subunit vaccines. These vaccines contain only the antigens of a pathogen that best stimulate a response. By including only the essential antigens and not the whole pathogen itself, these vaccines are much less likely to cause an adverse reaction and pose no risk of infection. Subunit vaccines tend to induce a weaker immune response. Last but not the least one is the conjugate vaccines. Some pathogens can be hard for the immune system to identify and so therefore they require a special type of vaccine. Bacteria coated with sugar molecules known as polysaccharides are able to mask the antigenic material on their surface. It makes it difficult for the immune system to recognize these uh, bacteria. To fight against these, conjugate vaccines are created. How are vaccines given? Vaccines are most effective if they can stimulate a response where pathogens are likely to invade, invade and harm the body. To ensure that their action is suitably targeted, the delivery routes of vaccines often mimic the invasion routes of pathogens. For example, the oral polio vaccine is ingested in order to stimulate an immune response in the lining of the intestines. The COVID-19 vaccine, which is currently under research, it is likely that more than one of these approaches will work, but until large clinical trials are co completed, we don't know for sure. Likewise, the different approaches may have different strengths and weaknesses. For example, the mRNA or DNA vaccines are much faster to produce, but neither has been used to successfully make a vaccine that has been used in people. On the other hand, killed viral vaccines and live or weakened viral vaccines have been used in people before and it is safe for many years but they take a very long time to produce. In addition to differences in how long it takes to make different types of vaccines, each type may also cause the immune system to respond differently. Understanding the immune responses that are generated will be important for determining whether additional doses will be needed, how long the vaccine recipients will be protected, and if one type offers benefits over the others. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Anushka Goyal of class 9A and my topic is health and hygiene. It's very important to take care of ourselves. So here are five steps to keep yourself healthy and hygienic. So first step is wash your hands with soap and water or just use sanitizer. Take bath every day. Use handkerchief or tissue with uh, while sneezing or coughing. Wear mask whenever you go outside. Eat healthy and balanced diet to stronger your immune system. Thank you. Good morning everybody, it's Prachi. In today's presentation, I am going to share some interesting and knowledgeable facts on the topic space exploration. So, sounds interesting, right? So, let's get into our presentation. First rocket in space. The first rocket that was able to fly high enough to be considered in space was V2 missile. This was a weapon developed by German scientists in the Second World War. The technology was used for rockets in early space exploration. First rocket in orbit. In 1957, the 
the Soviet Union launched a rocket that sent the first man-made satellite to orbit around the Earth. The satellite named Sputnik 1 orbited for 57 days before burning up upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. First life in space Just a few weeks after the successful launch of Sputnik 1, the Soviet Union launched another satellite, Sputnik 2. Sputnik 2 had a passenger for its journey, a dog named Laika. First life in space Unlike Sputnik 1, Sputnik 2 had to spot life, therefore it needed an oxygen generator for air, a fan to keep Laika cool, a harness to keep her safe, enough food for the journey, a way of collecting waste. Unfortunately, Laika did not survive the trip. However, she has left place in history as the first living thing to orbit the Earth. First human in space On April 12, 1961, Russian astronaut Yuri Gagin became the first human in space orbiting the Earth once. Gagin traveled in the spacecraft named Vostok 1. It was unknown how humans would react to being in space, so the flight was controlled from the ground. Yuri's trip once the spacecraft had been successfully launched, the rocket part dropped off the craft and returned to Earth. Only the capsule containing Gargan was sent into orbit. Upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, Gargan ejected from the craft and parachuted safely to the ground, raised to the moon. In 1969, American astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first man to set foot on the moon, proclaiming that one small Man, a giant leap for mankind. A rocket propelled spacecraft that made the journey to the moon was Apollo 11 as part of NASA's Apollo project. Mars The distance between Mars and Earth is about 55 million kilometers. Using current technology, 